Welcome to our third and final video in our series on cellular respiration. In this video, we'll focus on electron transport phosphorylation. In part one, we covered glycolysis, where glucose was broken down. We had to spin a little ATP, and we ended up making two pyruvates. In doing so, we made four ATP, a profit of two once we spent these two, and we made NADH, which we sent on to the electron transport chain, the topic of this video. At the end of glycolysis, we took these two pyruvates through the Krebs cycle. During the Krebs cycle, we prepared pyruvate in the prep step, liberating two carbon dioxide as waste products, making two more NADH that will go to electron transport. Acetyl-CoA was picked up by oxaloacetate to form citrate, and then continuing through a series of intermediates, the citric acid cycle produced two ATP, liberated four carbon dioxides, made six NADH, and 2-FADH2, all of which are going to the electron transport chain. So if we look at an accounting of cellular respiration through the Krebs cycle, we can see that we've taken apart our glucose and we've broken it up into six carbon dioxides, a six carbon molecule, six carbon dioxides. We've produced only four of our approximately 36 ATP. We've not yet used oxygen and we've not yet used water. but we have been creating high energy electron carriers. We've been stripping away high energy electrons from the high energy bonds of glucose as we've been breaking it down. And we have these NADHs and the 2FADH2s which are going to go to the electron transport chain for electron transport phosphorylation where we're going to make the majority of our ATP. So let's get to it. Here we are inside the mitochondria and we have 10 NADHs and 2 FADH2s that we've made throughout the process. And we need to send them to the electron transport chain. And the electron transport chain is found embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So if we look in here, we have to zoom in to these folds or these cristae. And in these folds of the mitochondria embedded in this membrane, we're going to find our electron transport chain which I have drawn, let's see if I can grab this and make this bigger. This may look familiar from our video series on photosynthesis. An electron transport chain. This is my representation, but I'll show you another way to look at it. Here's a diagram. It's a series of enzymes embedded in a membrane and electrons get passed along and in doing so we're going to make ATP. So let's look at this in isolation. This electron transport chain is embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And as electrons get passed along, energy is given off to make ATP. So, for instance, NADH, a high energy electron carrier, comes to the electron transport uh, chain, drops off that high energy electron in the hydrogen. And as the electron goes down in a series of reduction oxidation reactions, energy is given off to make ATP. Kind of. I say kind of because it's not that the energy is directly given off to ATP, but this process is going to set up the conditions under which ATP is made. So we need to look at it, the system in a little different way. So here's the inner membrane of the mitochondria, dividing us into an outer compartment and an inner compartment. So we might have, let's see, uh, on this diagram, uh, here's the inner compartment and here is a, the outer compartment. So it's across this membrane that the action is going to occur. So here's that inner mitochondrial membrane and here's the electron transport chain. The 10 NADHs and 2 FADH2s made in earlier stages of respiration come to the inner compartment and deliver those high energy electrons to this electron transport chain. Now whatever happens to NADH, uh, the same thing is going to happen for FADH2. So we're just going to look at NADH just to simplify things. As this high energy electron gets loaded onto this first step of the electron transport, it has to bring this hydrogen with it. It needs to bring this proton. It can't go uh, into this molecule uh, alone. So as it travels through this first protein complex, the electron carries the proton with it, the H+, and essentially pumps it into the inner compartment, or from the inner compartment to the outer compartment. And then the electron gets picked up by an electron acceptor. That electron acceptor brings the electron over to the next protein complex. As the electron drops off onto this enzyme, 
it has to pick up another proton. So it grabs another proton from the inner compartment and pulls it along with it through this protein complex. And once again, we pump a proton from the inner compartment to the outer compartment. The electron gets picked up by another electron acceptor and gets delivered to the final enzyme or protein complex in this membrane. For a third time, as this electron is loaded onto this protein complex, it has to grab a proton from the inner compartment. And it pumps this proton across. So essentially, this electron transport chain is a three-part proton pump. And this electron is no longer a high-energy electron. Now, imagine this happens over and over again with all the NADH uh, delivering their electrons and all the FADH2s. We're going to pump a lot of protons into the outer compartment. Let's move all those to the outside. So we have all these protons out here. And these protons are trapped in the outer compartment, and they want to move down their concentration gradient back into the inner compartment, but they can't make it through this membrane. Well, it turns out there's a special channel for them. And the channel is called ATP synthase. It will allow the protons to flow back through down their concentration gradient. And notice it's called ATP synthase. It is the also not only a channel protein, but it's also an enzyme that catalyzes the ADP plus P reaction to make ATP. However, if you recall, this reaction also requires the input of energy. The energy for this reaction comes from the flow of protons through this channel. And this is electron transport phosphorylation. We phosphorylate ADP into ATP, and it's driven by chemiosmosis, which is the production of an electrochemical gradient that then drives uh, the production of ATP. And it's responsible for the final 382 ATP that we're going to make. So let's quickly summarize. In electron transport phosphorylation, electron carriers take the high energy electrons picked up during glycolysis, the PrEP step, and Krebs cycle, the NADH and FADH2, to a group of enzymes in the folds of the mitochondria. These enzymes take the high energy electrons and pass them down the line, and as electron is passed, hydrogen ions, or protons, are pumped to the outer compartment of the mitochondria. This ion gradient is used to run the ATP production by electron transport phosphorylation, or chemiosmosis, and we produce approximately 32 ATP. So let's move to a final accounting. After we go through the ETC, and we've dropped off our high energy electrons from the 10 NADH and the 2 FADH2, we have an output of approximately 32 ATP. So, we're done making ATP. But we have a problem. We've yet to make water and we've yet to use oxygen. So we need to go back to the pit. When the electron gets to the end of the electron transport chain, it's got to be picked up and moved out of the way so that the next electron can come down. It's got to like move from the bottom of the staircase so the next person can come down the stairs. So something's got to remove this electron. That something is oxygen. We finally use oxygen. This is aerobic respiration, cellular respiration. Oxygen comes in, grabs the electron, and grabs the hydrogen to make water. And so there we have it. We finally use oxygen, and we finally make water. So we're done. When the electron gets to the end of the electronic uh, transport chain, Oxygen is the last electron acceptor, and water is the last product made, as the oxygen picks up the electron and combines with the hydrogen. This is interesting because it's a nice mirror to what we saw in photosynthesis, where water was the original electron donor. Here, oxygen is the last electron acceptor, and water is the final product made. So now we're finished in our three-part series on respiration. Glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport. Click here for a video on fermentation to look at a different way to get the energy out of glucose. Now remember, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below.